I'm Alan Combs. I want to welcome Robert Bianchi, former uh, Mars County prosecutor, also certified criminal trial attorney. Uh, thank you, Counselor, for coming on the program here tonight. Uh, what's your reaction to the Baltimore prosecutor's actions today? Well, Alan, thanks for having me on. Yes, uh, to be honest with you, from the beginning of this, it, it wasn't a surprise to me that there would be criminal charges that were filed. Uh, again, with the police uh, in-death fatalities that you have with these kinds of cases, the fact that he was not seatbelted, he was handcuffed, and he had uh, shackles on his legs put him in an extremely known, vulnerable position that police officers are trained on routinely throughout this country that can cause serious bodily injury or death. And in fact, in Baltimore, they've had cases where people have died under these circumstances. So it, ro- it rose to that level, not necessarily a purposeful or intentional, but certainly gross negligence or recklessness that could Did they take enough on. time to do this? And why wasn't there a grand jury? You know, uh, that's a good question. I'm, I'm, there's a little bit about these procedures I'm not very happy about uh, in, in terms of the way I see things. I think a grand jury should have been impaneled. That would be the better way to go. It was a very quick investigation, uh, which leads me to have some concerns about it. And while I think the prosecutor did a pretty good job in that press conference, I'm really concerned when I hear things that they she's been listening to the demonstrators, listening to the people around the nation, no peace, no justice. Well, now I'm giving you justice, so give us peace. I, I, I thought that was an inartful thing for a prosecutor to do. And again, I think she's done a generally good job, but you need to be outside the political realm in any prosecution and just stick to the law and facts, not the court of public opinion. Um, do you, you know, we don't know much about these six officers. We do know, however, that one of them, by the way, one of the cops uh, who was, uh, I think, charged with manslaughter today, Baltimore Police Officer Brian Rice, a central figure here, was hospitalized three years ago for mental health concerns. Um, and that there are some questions of whether he should even have been on the force. If we find more about these police officers, we might find some shocking revelations. I find this troubling. You know, Alan, this is an issue. Uh, Listen, we want to be able to be responsive, have police departments certainly that are protecting people's civil rights, but there are a number of police officers, and I've said this throughout an entire career and as a lead prosecutor for a county, that we have to make sure are temperamentally fit for the job. And there are a segment of the police community, like in any community, that are not temperamentally fit. And this is where we need internal affairs and better practices from the federal government down so it's uniform. It's too disparate, even in one state, in how these internal affairs and manners in which we ferret out unfit police officers are done. We need a universal guideline to follow. And if you're not fit for the job, you shouldn't have a gun, a badge. Listen, I feel bad for the guy if he had mental health problems, but you certainly shouldn't be a police well, officer. I'm not indicting all people with mental health problems, but in this case, Rice had twice been accused of domestic violence, temporarily ordered by a court to stay away from the person in the second case. Um, So as we learn more about these police officers, uh, it could be troubling. You also have said, uh, Counselor, that they, they may have missed an opportunity to gather key video surveillance. What do you mean? Yeah, sure. I mean, one of the first things you do in any kind of homicide case or homicide investigation, especially a police-related one, one of the very first things, basic investigation 101, you canvass the area for witnesses, you canvass the area for video recording devices. And the reason why that's important, obviously, is witnesses can move away from a scene and you may lose the opportunity to speak to them. But the video cameras also get rewritten, uh, written over or lost or destroyed. And in fact, when they went back a week later, some key cameras that could have captured that were working uh, some of the information in this case, unfortunately, were lost because they were recorded over. So I was really surprised that um, the manner in which the investigation proceeded, that that was not a very basic, like within two minutes of being at a crime scene, this is what we do in order to ensure we don't lose that evidence. You've also said, and you're correct about this, in this day and age, the, the fact that we don't have van cams, Yeah, this is extraordinary to me. Listen, I'm a big believer in in, uh, body cams and in van cams and, like, the MVR, motor vehicle recordings that police officers objected to many years ago. What you will find is that they actually exonerate a lot of police officers, and you have a a videotape that shows the encounter. So for those officers, the majority of which are doing a great job, it's actually been very instrumental in defending them in cases where they've been wrongly accused. But also, at the same time, obviously, if you have a temperamentally unfit officer— or even just for training issues, not anything as, as, as the magnitude of what we're dealing with here, it gives an opportunity for the departments to better themselves in terms of training. I don't understand why in a van, a policeman, where you do have people who act out, you do have violent people, people that are on drugs, why they wouldn't have a video recording device. And what about the fact that video. apparently they made one stop that was not recorded? Uh, what, that raises questions about, you know, was the police report accurate? 
Yeah, well, we have to look through all that discovery and see if the police report is accurate. Of course, we have to see if it was a creative uh, narrative that was being written by the police. But at one point in time, we do know that the police pulled over and actually put uh, foot shackles on him. So it indicates to me that there was something going on inside that van. But as the prosecutor noted, and again, we don't have all the facts, if it's true, there were five occasions she noted that they could have belted him in, into the uh, into the van yep. so that he would not be moving around because essentially he was hogtied completely incapable of being able to defend himself. We're talking to Robert Bianchi, former Morris County, New Jersey prosecutor. Uh, it is often said that a prosecutor will not bring a case unless there is concrete evidence because prosecutors don't like to lose cases. Yet this prosecutor, four months on the job, being accused of, well, she's got a husband who's a volatile in terms of his language, a city councilman. Uh, she is uh, wants to tamp down any problems before the weekend, make sure there's no more riots, lives in the neighborhood where much of this was happening, trying to, to, to maybe play to that particular constituency. So she is being uh, put down, it seems, for, you know, for those, well, she, she acted too quickly before all the information's in. Is, are any of these accusations valid against the prosecutor? Well, Alan, I believe I believe they are. And again, I don't mean to say that she's not doing a good job, but she herself is indicating that she's listening to the demonstrators. She has a husband who is involved in politics. We've debated this in our country for many years. Is it better to have an appointed prosecutor? For example, I was appointed by the governor. I was not elected. The reason they do that is because they believe that you will not be um, subject to the whim of public opinion in order to get votes. Well, how about serving the governor who may have a political point of view? I mean, they, they can go either way. There's no yeah. perfect way of doing it. You have to do it one way or the other. But I can only tell you from my experience, when you get appointed in, in the state of New Jersey, they basically tell you, do your own thing, and you don't get contacted by the governor's office. We go back to the Duke Lacrosse case where we saw some of this happening, where they're pandering necessarily to uh, constituency in order to get votes. And I'm not saying that's happening here, but clearly from her statement, she's concerned about the public perception. Um, I would be concerned about the public perception, too, but only as it related to the facts and law, not with regard to the court But that of doesn't mean she doesn't have some, some enough evidence to go and bring a case forward. No, it doesn't. I just think it was an inartful comment. I think she's trying to tamp down a bad situation that's going on there. Uh, and and I'm, I'm making a very minor critique of her here, uh, but I just would rather have see a prosecutor not catering to a constituency as opposed to just following the facts and law. So I, I would not have made those comments because I don't want anybody to believe these are police officers now that are charged. They are defendants presumed innocent. They have to be proven guilty uh, in a court of law beyond a reasonable doubt, and they have a right to have the case heard in a court of law, not the court of public opinion. What do you predict going to happen? I believe they're going to be convicted, but I don't believe all they're six? going to be convicted. Uh, well, I, I can't tell you about all six because we really don't know a lot about all the officers in their individual role, but they w will not, in my opinion, be convicted of the highest charge at second degree. Did they overcharge? The yes. You think it yeah. was a mistake to charge second degree murder, at least in one case? Well, listen, it gives you bargaining opportunities, uh, negotiation opportunities, and certainly you can go to a jury, and if the jury finds them not guilty of that, I do believe somewhere down the line the involuntary manslaughter, which is a little bit of a lower standard, or some of the official misconduct cases, uh, uh, charges they're, they're probably going to wind up getting hit for. Because, listen, all the all actors, all the police officers, acted in concert by not following the policies and procedures, and had they had him belted, apparently from the autopsy report it would be clear to, from what we're hearing right now that this would not have happened. So I think uh, not all the charges, but a lot of them. Thank you, Mr. Bianchi. Thanks for talking.